Hi and welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to show you how to create a review with just a few clicks. This is Notebook LM. It's an experimental AI from Google and it is going to blow your mind. Okay, I promise you, you've seen nothing like this. So here we go, new notebook. We click on there and we can upload from Google Docs. We can give it a website link. We can give it copied text. I've tried all these and they all work. So let's go to Google Docs. Okay, this is a Google Doc of uh, my latest book that I published on uh, Amazon. It's uploading it. This is uh, around about 7,500, 8,000 words. What we're going to do is the audio interview here. We're going to generate it. Now, I've, I've already done this. So you click this button and it takes you know, two, three minutes and you have an audio deep dive. It's a conversation with two people. It sounds like a podcast. It's like a story. It has got, uh, it goes deeper into your uh, content. It comes up with things that you implied but didn't actually uh, write. It is absolutely amazing. I mean, I mean that, I'm just mind blown. I have put uh, articles through it. You can see here, um, this is an article I've done today. We have that review there. We have a review of an article I wrote yesterday and we have a review of an article I wrote the other day. They're all about eight or nine minutes long. So this is seven and a half thousand words. This is about, four, this is about 500 words. This is about 350 or 400 words. And they all come out about eight minutes long. Right, so what I'm gonna do next is, this is the front page of Notebook LM. Okay, I am going to put this into uh, the, the rest of the video. So all you'll see is a cover because this is generated as a .wav file. But listen to it, I am sure you'll be blown away. Any questions, please ask below. Now let's listen to the video. Okay, so who hasn't like daydreamed about ditching their job? Mm. You know, like tossing the old nine to five and finally launching that online business. That's the dream, right? It is. But today we're not just daydreaming, we're going deeper, way deeper. Deep dive time. Exactly, a deep dive into the mind of someone who's actually been living that dream for, get this, 20 years. Now that's what I call walking the walk. Talk about experience, it, right? You know and that's what makes Mark Thompson and his book, Engage, Empower, Enrich, so fascinating. Right, 20 years, that's not just luck, that's a system he's figured out. And that's what we're gonna unpack today, those golden nuggets you can actually use. Yes, and what I love is, like, Thompson built this whole thing from nothing. Back in 2005, I mean... Ancient history, right. <laughs> right. Back when most of us were still figuring out how to download a song without it taking, like, three days. Remember dial-up? Vaguely. Yeah. He started with just his laptop and a whole lot of hustle. It really proves that the core principles, they don't really change. The tech might, but building an audience, building a business online, that's surprisingly consistent. It's true. And Thompson breaks it down into this framework that anyone can use. He calls it, and no surprise here, engage, empower, enrich. And I kind of think of it like a journey, you know, one you're taking your audience on. It's a great way to visualize it, yeah. You start with people who have absolutely no idea who you are. Your job is to grab their attention, show them like, hey, here's what's possible, and turn those people into followers. That's what Thompson calls the this is what's possible stage. Okay, so how do you actually do that? Well, Thompson uses himself as an, an example, a case study. He compares how he writes for a platform like Medium versus how he writes for his own Substack newsletter. And get this, he even wrote an article about it on Medium. Very meta. Right, very meta. That's classic Thompson, always teaching even when he's comparing platforms. The real takeaway is how he actually tailors his approach for each different audience. So on Medium, it's about casting a wide net, showing off his expertise to this broad audience that maybe doesn't know him that well. Okay, so it's about attracting new people who might be interested in what he has to say. Exactly. Got it. But then on Substack, these are people who have already opted in. They basically said, hey, I like what you're putting down. I want more. 
So you'd be yeah. way more granular, way more yeah. actionable, right? Exactly. He knows they're already interested, so he's not holding back. He's giving them that how-to content, the good stuff that really delivers. And that's what keeps them coming back for more, right? That yeah. value. That's the name of the game, really. And the big takeaway here from this whole engage stage, it's not just about making content. It's about making the right content, content that's tailored for where people are in their journey with you. So once you've got them engaged, then what? How do you empower them to actually take that next step? Well, this is where it gets really interesting. You've got their attention. Now what? Time to level up. Exactly. Yeah. Thompson says this is where you move from giving away free content to offering something more, something with a price tag, but it's got to provide way more value. He calls this the empower stage. And it's like giving your audience a taste of what's possible. It's like a doorway leading them to your expertise. Okay, I like that, a doorway. Yeah. And he's got a perfect example of this, his $5 a month newsletter. It's super affordable, gives you really valuable insights, but it also gives people a reason to invest a little further in what he's offering. It's low risk, you know, yeah. for people to be like, all right, I'm ready to go a little deeper. Thompson also talks about using those community platforms like school mm. as another way to empower subscribers. Yeah, school is cool. It's all about creating that space for people to connect, not just with you, but with each other. And they can learn from each other, get more personalized support than you could ever give in like a newsletter or blog post, right? You got it. It's about belonging, like a shared purpose. And that leads right into that final stage of the journey in Rich. This is where Thompson had this like light bulb moment. He was in Vegas for a live event priced at $500 a ticket, thinking, okay, maybe a couple people will show up. Wait, $500? That's a bold move. It was bold, but guess what? Sold out overnight. That was huge for him, a turning point. He realized that people didn't just want the information, they wanted to know how to use it. They were hungry for implementation, not just the theory. So it's not just about teaching people what to do. You got to show them how to do it and then like give them the tools and support to actually make it happen. Exactly. That's the enriched stage in a nutshell. And it opens up so many possibilities for how you can help your audience. Think coaching, group programs, masterminds, even retreats. The sky's the limit. Okay. So we've covered the whole engage, empower, enrich thing. Mm -hmm. How does Thompson actually make it work in real life? He's got these actionable takeaways. And the first one, really hit home for me, build that consistent writing habit. It's like anything else, like working a muscle. The more you write, the easier it gets. And Thompson, he walks the walk, even shares his routine in the book. Oh yeah, he goes on this epic 5K walk every morning along the beach, clears his head, brainstorms ideas, talk about a morning routine. Then he goes home, writes for a few hours, no distractions, pure creative flow. It's a good reminder that you don't need much to make this work. Just some dedicated time and focus. Even 30 minutes a day can make a difference. So true. And he's also big on white space and cadence when you're writing. That's a good one. He actually puts two versions of the same paragraph in the book side by side. One's this massive wall of text, impossible to read. The other's broken up, shorter sentences, paragraphs, way more inviting. Oh my gosh, yes. As someone who reads a ton online, if I see a wall of text, I'm out. Give me that white space. Exactly. And Thompson's point is, this isn't about sacrificing good grammar or anything like that. It's about making your writing accessible, enjoyable to read, which obviously keeps people engaged. It's like they say, brevity is the soul of wit. Nobody wants to read a novel when they're just looking for a quick takeaway, right? <laughs> exactly. Speaking of keeping people engaged, Thompson is all about the power of a clear call to action. Don't be shy about telling people what you want them to do, yeah, right? Exactly. Whether it's signing up for your email list, checking out a product, or even just leaving a comment, that clear call to action gives them direction and they're way more likely to actually do it. He's got this great example in the book from one of his Substack posts, leads with value, explains this really simple content strategy, then boom, clear call to action at the end, learn more. And guess what? He got a 10% conversion rate from readers to subscribers. Now that's impressive. And finally, Thompson talks about the importance of the conversation. And he doesn't mean just like responding to comments. He means really reaching out, starting conversations, you know, building those real relationships with people, right. like actually engaging. Yeah, like he gives this super simple example, this email outreach thing. It's something like, hey, Noticed you were checking out topic or product. Just wanted to see if you had any questions or anything I could help you with. It's so simple. It is, but it works, you know, because people can totally tell when it's just some generic message. But when you make it personal, it shows you actually care. It builds that trust. Human connections like that sequel sauce, right? Yeah. And it reminds me, Thompson talks with this idea, relationships before transactions. 
It's not just about making a quick buck. It's about building something that lasts. A real community, people who know you, like you, and trust you. He's got this great analogy. Imagine two coffee shops, right? One's your usual spot. The barista knows your name, your order. You feel that connection. The other one is just some random place. Which one are you telling your friends about? Oh, the one where they know me. For sure. Yeah. I'm not just another sale. Exactly. And it's the same for any business, especially online. Focus on those relationships first. And those people, they become your loyal customers. They tell everyone about you. They become like true fans. Okay. So how do we actually do that? Build those relationships online? <laughs> well, Thompson says sharing personal stories helps, even if they seem kind of boring. It makes you relatable. You know, like a real person, not just some robot behind a screen. That makes sense. And be yourself. Don't be afraid to show your personality, your interests, even the things that make you a little weird. People buy from people they like, and people like people who are genuine. Authenticity. I like it. It's huge. And of course, back up those relationships with action. Do what you say you're going to do. Deliver on those promises. If you say your content has seven ways to boost productivity, well, those seven ways better be good. Right. No bait and switch. Exactly. And if someone's unhappy, make it easy for them. Easy refunds, no hassle. Don't risk your reputation over one transaction. It's not worth it. Solid advice. So as we wrap up this deep dive, it's clear that this engage, empower, enrich thing, it's not just some theory. Yeah. Mark Thompson has been using this for 20 years, and it clearly works. The online world might change, but the fundamentals, those never get old. Understand your people, build those relationships, provide real value. It's timeless. Couldn't agree more. And before we go, Thompson leaves us with this really thought-provoking idea. He says this whole relationships before transactions thing, it's not just for business. It applies to, like, everything you do online. He's right. It's a mindset shift. Instead of thinking, what can I get, it's what can I give? Maybe it's a thriving community. Maybe it's genuine connections. Maybe it's just sharing your passions with the world. Love that. Yeah. So as you're out there doing your thing online, think about that. How can you build those relationships, build trust, and give real value? Something to think about. And that wraps up another deep dive. We'll be back next week with another awesome topic to help you navigate this crazy world we call online business. Until then, happy, engaging, empowering, and enriching.